this is home cooking. I don't do the kind of Jamie Oliver uh, chop, 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 you know, it's just normal slices uh, until 1972. My mother wouldn't let me learn how to cook. And the reason was very simple. She said, I don't want you to till they'd had an education. Because once they were in the kitchen, this is what they used to say in, in my language, in Kachi, which means once you're in the kitchen, you as a woman will never be able to leave it. So they didn't teach us cooking until we'd had our education. So when I finished my university education and I got married to my first husband, that's when my mother, I would ring my mother, I've got the book, I'll show you, and I would scribble down her instructions on how to make things. And I honestly did not know how to cook at all. I didn't know how to buy meat or anything. This is the first book I wrote recipes in, but yeah, but let me find the ones that she taught me. And Kukupaka, I think was here. Wait, where did it go? Uh, so here is Kukupaka, look. Now this was written in 1972. How long ago is that? How old would you have been here? 23. And you were writing it down and your mum was saying it on yeah. the phone and you were yeah. putting it down. And you, that's why it's so yeah, uh, not yeah. very well written. And, and you've written it in, in, in Gujarati. Gujarati. And I didn't know I had it. Wow. So I just found it again. I've been asking all my relatives. And there it is. And here is Kukupak. So now what I do next is I've made a paste here, which I'm just going to whiz again. Coria, fresh coriander, chili, and lemon, and salt. I'm just going to whiz it. People know me as this ferocious um, columnist and uh, political journalist, and you know, they, they have such an impression of me. And I do spend a good time of the day, actually, thinking, worrying, uh, um, combating in the political ar arena. And the only time my heart and head settles is when I walk into this kitchen, which I, I cook every night. I cook every single night. Fresh from scratch. Fresh from scratch. And you can ask my husband and he'll tell you. Because I need to just let go. And I, it, it totally, totally um, calms me down takes away the day's worries, takes away all the excitement too. I love doing what I do. It also landed me my husband. I, mean, I always tell young women who write to me, I said, look, the way I found him and kept him was by knowing how to make chapatis because he said that it was when I was rolling my chapatis, she thought it was the sexiest thing he'd ever seen two ha female hands do, that he decided he would never leave. <laughs> and, you know, if he, he, he never left touch wood, touch wood. Even today, if I make chapatis, and I mean, I'm very, both very old now, uh, there is some magic <laughs> that happens. Magic happens. And so I'm now going to put some, uh, a bit of lime into the turmeric in now. Put in some tomatoes. This is a traditional East African Shia Muslim dish. It's a very specific um, dish. And you know, let me tell you one, one of the interesting things in our mosque, even now, even in London, at the end of prayers on Friday evenings, people bring food, beautifully made food and beautifully presented food of all kinds. And after prayers, it is sold for a pittance. And Kukupaka is the one that is almost every Friday you will find in our mosque being brought by this lady or the other because it's a, a dish that everybody loves. And um, it was a dish I remember my mother used to take to mosque. I will always be connected to that past, to my history, to that country, to my family, to, to my community actually. Um, who were, when we were in dire straits, you know, somebody would pay my school fees. I mean, the rich kids were always the rich kids, and, um, you know, I didn't care much about them, but it's such a part of me. I'm just going to put some uh, coriander now into the... I'll put the coconut in first. See how lovely it looks? Beautiful colour. 
and now it'll bubble and then I'll put in the coriander but I won't put it all in because it depends on how hot the chili is. We ha I had dreamt about coming to England, you know. I'd read the Enid Blyton books and I'd seen those pictures of strawberries and um, uh, apple pie. And, and here I was reading Jane Austen in Oxford, wearing Laura Ashley clothes. But very soon you began, this was also a time of terrible racism. I remember one night, one day, North in North Oxford and this guy came up and the same atmosphere that we now have in this country of hate the foreigner hate the migrant all this stuff he came over to me and spat at me and told me um, you know that people like me won't want it and I and that was actually quite good because I suddenly saw how he saw me that that Laura Ashley Victorian dress and the Jane Austen book. He saw me like I should have seen myself. Do you know what I mean? That it was a lesson. So you see, as it gets this way, I add a bit of this powder and it will make it come alive a little bit. So our neighbors just up the road and they would always complain about the smells and knock on the door and kick at the door and you know tell us to close the kitchen window this is a nation which now says its national food is chicken tikka masala well let me tell you it wasn't like that then and um, then what when, when I was getting married in the morning um, I actually did something very bad I went in because we had no money and I was getting married and I wanted some flowers from to hold and so I, at, before dawn, I went to their front garden and cut some roses and they saw me because of course they were night workers, some of them. So they were absolutely in our, up, up in arms about it. Came to the door sh shouting horrible racist abuse and my mother was making these biscuits, wedding biscuits that are called Nan Katai. They're lovely little biscuits, actually they're a bit like shortbread. I'm sure we borrowed them from shortbread. And they're round, and then there's a dip in the middle, which um, a, a kind of red color is, um, you, you print, you kind of use your finger. And this is, of course, the a symbol of a, a bride, red, yeah? And so she was making these nan katais at five o'clock in the morning. And when they started, and we really were scared this time. So she carries this tray of hot nan katai out my mother was about this high and uh, she said it's my it's my daughter's wedding please have please good luck please please and they were so shocked by the kindness that they took one two three the whole lot went away and never bothered us again that nan katai fixed it fixed it and of course we migrants i use it now both <clears throat> To, to kind of relate myself back to where I come from, but also to win friends and influence people. Yeah. Now, can you see how thick this has got? We're nearly there. It's sticking now. So it, it takes its time, doesn't it? You have you to do it. You can't hurry it. No, you can't hurry this one. But now it's done. I'm going to just let it go, you know, and then go on top of the chicken, yeah. which will be baked again for half an hour, oh. and then we are done. So when we, when you're poor like we were, you always put potatoes into yeah, meat dishes, and also meat was expensive. So if you had potatoes, it, more people could eat. Yeah. I feel very lucky that I'm living somewhere where I can make Italian food, Spanish food. Um, you know, I make wonderful paellas, whatever. But my heart is always in my original yeah. Indian food. You know, a, a chap I met, uh, a Brexit uh, voter, old oh man, and he said to me quite bitterly, he said, we won the war, but you won the peace. The smell of curry makes me feel that, you know, defeated. And I said, well, I, I do understand that um, because, you know, I too understand how food 
can make you feel. And I told him the story about no smelly food. I said, you know, when your people came to our countries, they made us feel uh, the way you say you're feeling now. So, and I then laughed and I said, well, don't you think it's better that we're, con we're I'm only using food to conquer you. Uh, whereas you lot used a lot worse. Food is a narrative yes. of everything from power to politics, to love, to uh, status, belonging, gender, everything, race. Yeah. Arifa, can you do this? Because my wrist is still quite sore. Yeah. Um, just pour this over. Fine. No, I'm going to pour it now over the chicken. Yeah, yeah please. Mm. And it'll cook in there. 